you're on. Okay. Hey y'all, this is Rachel Grammer with Two Hearts Weddings and Events. I'm a planner here in Birmingham area. Um, the ladies here at Engaged Library asked me to come in today and talk to you a little bit about how to figure out how much beer and wine you need for your wedding reception. Um, I wish I could say that this is an exact science, but unfortunately it is not. And depending on who you're talking to, a bartender there, a bartender here, catering staff there, um, you'll get a bunch of different options and ideas and suggestions. There's even several online calculators that you can use, but none of them seem to have a consistent um, formula. So I started using something a couple years ago that helps me out a lot. It's pretty simple and concise. And basically, you just want to try to figure one drink per guest per hour. Um, you do want to figure it on your full guest list rather than just you say, well, only say 80% of my guests are actual um, drinkers and the other 20% are not going to be drinking alcohol at all. You still want to use them as your full count because for those guests who seem to be, seem to be a little bit more on the... Um, higher end of consuming of your alcohol, they will wash out with the guests who don't consume at all. So if you if you figure completely, you'll, you'll probably end up being a little bit closer to what you really need. So let's say um, you have 200 guests and you've got a three hour reception, um, one drink per hour is gonna be 600 drinks total. And I know you're thinking, wow, that's a lot of drinks. But actuality, it's not that much. Um, then once you decide how many total drinks you need at the bar, then you need to kind of figure out from looking at your guest list, your percentage of your beer drinkers versus your wine drinkers. So um, I have a quick spreadsheet that I'm gonna share and the ladies um, at Engage can share it with you if you'd like. But for my particular example, I'm just going 60-40%. 60% um, of my um, guests attending are gonna drink beer in this scenario and 40% are gonna drink wine. So given that, with 600 drinks, I've got 360 drinks of beer and 240 drinks of wine. Um, and then from there, all you do are simple calculations. A case of beer has 24 bottles in it, so you take the 360 divided by 24, and you get 15 cases of beer. And then simple calculations of wine are five, typically five glasses to a bottle of wine. And so you divide 240 um, by five glasses and you'll get 48 bottles of wine. And typically wine is sold in 12 bottles per case. And so that gives you approximately four cases of wine that you would figure out. Um, like I said, this particular um, spreadsheet that I have will be available later. Um, but you, know, you can fluctuate by the number of guests you have, by the number of hours your reception is. Um, but it's pretty simple. And then one other tip though, once you do get your calculations figured up, is to actually um, go a little higher. Um, add a little bit of padding in there. We all like to have a little bit of extra room um, in no, in ma no matter what we're doing. Um, so if you'll um, pad your, your order a little bit, you'll be better. Um, I do have some tips also that I wanna share about your bar. Um, your bar definitely depends on the time of day your reception is occurring. So like if it is, or also the day of the week. So like if it's a Friday or a Saturday event, uh, chances are your guests will drink more. It's more of a, a party feel those days of the week, as opposed to like a Sunday afternoon um, reception where you still wanna have alcohol, but guests are probably gonna be a little bit more tampered in their consumption. Um, let's see, if you have a chance um, to, um, tap the resource of an actual licensed event bartender to help with your um, figuring, that's always helpful. Somebody who's licensed and knows um, what it is to run a full event will surely be able to help you figure out your consumption better than say a, bar a bartender that just works at your regular favorite watering hole um, because they're not used to actually staffing or knowing specifically how much to order for a particular event because they don't know your guests but somebody who's actually in the event industry, and that is their particular expertise in the field, they will know how to put you through a series of questions of like what I had just asked you, like you know, what percentage you're gonna be into beer, which percentage you're into wine, and 
of the wines. Do they prefer reds over whites? And you know, just a little bit more in-depth conversation with that particular bartender. Um, let's see. Search for suppliers that will allow you to return any unopened bottles or cases. Um, believe it or not, there are some suppliers out there that will allow that. And um, in the event that you are left over at the end of the night with some um, product, it's great to actually be able to return it back and get some money back. Imagine that, take, getting your parents back some money after the wedding. Um, and oftentimes these suppliers can um, offer you a discount with the bulk purchase. So be sure to ask these questions. Um, let's see, in many cases, most of your venues require a licensed bartender to serve your alcohol at your, um, at your bar, but there are some situations where you may not um, have to go that route, um, depending on your uh, local laws and all that, but I do encourage you to hire a licensed bartender to manage your bar simply because there are liability issues that you do not want to find out on the flip side of. Um, what those are like and have to go through and then also at the end of the night when you need to close your bar down there's none of this um, there's somebody who's professionally trained to deal with guests that are still trying to get those last little drinks or they want to take some extra with them for the road these are all no-no's and can get you in trouble later um, I also say make sure you close your bar down quietly no last call 30 minutes before your reception ends. Um, a, for the bartenders to put things away quietly and um, take account of everything and um, pack everything away. Um, but it also um, avoids those awkward conversations with guests and um, sometimes people reaching for alcohol. Because when you have a party, people get overzealous sometimes and they're like, hey, just one more, I just need one more. She would be okay with me to have one more but having a licensed um, bartender to handle that and control that is money well spent. So, um, oh, and one more tip, make sure you have a good beverage station, a non-alcoholic beverage station, full of water and tea, and keep it going well after the bar closes to hydrate those folks before they get back on the road. So I hope that this helps you a lot. Um, if not, I'm sure they, the ladies that engage will be able to share um, the, the spreadsheet I've given and some tips we've given, and um, we'll try to sum it up a little bit more on the blog for you, but um, don't stress about it. There's no exact science with it. Um, just do your best. Know that your guests are appreciative of whatever you serve. Um, it is a hosted party, and um, just have fun with it. Don't get stressed about it.